Hello and welcome to Chapter Select at the Movies. In this case, we're covering a TV show. It's The Last of Us. We're on episode three. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an interesting one. It's from what little that I've picked up of the discourse has been uh, lighting the internet up with conversations of whether or not the locale is authentic or whether the show is being too woke or, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether this is not driving the plot forward enough. That nah, is a bunch of nonsense. This is an amazing episode of television. It, while a lot of those arguments are valid minus the woke one, because if anybody's going, wow, The Last of Us is trying to be woke, have you not paid attention to the two games? That's yeah, exactly. what The Last of Us is. It's trying to be woke. And it's, well, that's, I'm not saying that's, that's not. Thing. But no, I'm just saying, but the other arguments, uh, is the locale different? Yes. Um, is it different from the game? Yes. Uh, does it not push the, the plot forward enough? Sure. But I'm 100% with you. This is a I mean, beautiful story told in this in this episode. And while, yes, it's completely different. And if you were looking for great banter between some of the characters that we saw in the game, obviously you weren't going to get it in this episode. But man, what a story they told. I actually thought there was a lot of really good Ellie banter. A lot of a lot of good uh, Ellie and Joel stuff um, before, you know, the flashback. Which, mm -hmm. to address my theory from last time, um, already disproved, right? So I was thinking, oh, is this going to be a weekly thing? These, um, you know, openings where we're in some kind of uh, pre-pandemic flashback. Well, uh, and, technically, uh, no, you're they not, didn't. You're not fully wrong. Not fully. We, we just flipped because, it. We just yeah. flipped. Yeah, we get 20 we, minutes of Ellie and Joel, yeah. and then we get an hour uh, of backstory, which, mm -hmm. yes, while not driving Ellie and Joel's story, story forward, I think is a spectacular piece of world building um, and a great, you know, while it's about somebody that in the current timeline is already, you know, long gone, uh, inform our opinion and understanding of Joel and how Joel relates to other people and, and all that mm -hmm. as well. And yeah, just, like I, you know, seeing Joel and Ellie react to what they find out as well. Right. Like I, I said, it would have been fun to see Bill and Ellie interact because, again, in that game, they have some fantastic banner, especially when they get to Bill's mm -hmm. hideout area. Um, I know a lot of people are upset we did not get Joel hanging upside down, which mm. he gets caught by one of Bill's traps. I, I've listened to a couple other podcasts throughout the week, and I agree 100% with them. I think we still get that moment. They just put it in a different spot in the timeline, whether it is in this next episode where if you've seen any trailers, mm -hmm. they're headed to Pittsburgh, and they will have human interaction. Oh, yeah, they can do that anytime. So, yeah, that, that one set piece can be put anywhere, and I think a lot of people were upset about that. So I get it, but... Listen, if you've never played the games and you were trying to figure out how this played out in the video game, it did not. You don't even know that Bill is gay or whatever, I mean, or switched gay, whatever has happened in there. Because according to this episode, you know, he really was never with anybody because he hated humanity and, mm -hmm. and then met Frank, who kind of changes his perspective, at least on Frank. Um, you don't learn any of that from Bill himself. It's all little notes and stuff you find around. And that's kind of where you start piecing together who this Frank person is. And then in the game, you find Frank hanging. So mm -hmm. Frank is literally in the game for two minutes and already dead. So to take that snippet of this video game and turn it into an hour long episode mm -hmm. of just fantastic, a fantastic story about love and loss and, and to change things completely, but still have such a beautiful story. It's just this yeah. whole episode is so good. I mean, I don't know how completely it's been changed. I mean, obviously there's you know differences, but um, I would say kind of a masterclass in adaptation in that this is the first time I can really think of. You know, we all play. You and I, we both love environmental storytelling games. We love mm -hmm. games, you know, like Gone Home. You know, we reviewed. Yes. Uh, that's just the most prominent example 
where you know you're exploring a space and you're finding you know little notes and scraps and just things in the environment that inform character and inform backstory and you start to piece it all together as mm -hmm. you say and that's one of the main components of the last of us as well and i've never seen someone take that you know maybe bioshock if they ever get bioshock together because bioshock is one of those games too right. bioshock you would know? definitely be have you'd have to be like that right where you'd say okay you know let's actually just take this and adapt it as a flashback Mm -hmm. You know, something that in the game, you, you don't ever have insight into it beyond, you know, a, you know, a few scraps of paper, an audio log, whatever. Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, an hour of television. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is, uh, I don't know if that's ever been done before. And it's definitely not, not at this level. No, and honestly, I think it's, it's only possible by making The Last of Us a, a series. Mm. And not a movie. If oh we yeah, had the yeah. Movie, the last never of have us, time in a movie for any of this. It, it would, it would never work. And now, I mean, we say that, and you know, there was Halo, which <laughs> didn't do any of that, anyways, because there wasn't much to pull off of. But yeah, being able to do episodes is allows you to kind of do the side thing. And I believe we'll get another episode down the line. And we've talked about it before with the DLC from mm -hmm. the opening sure. game. And, and I think they'll be able to do. I would say almost delve deeper into that. I think we'll see more of those two characters. Again, not to spoil for anyone that's never played the games, mm -hmm. but dive more into those two characters before you know they get split up or before they have that that special moment that we get in the yeah, DLC. And there was and a I nice think, little hint yeah. at that, right? In the previous episodes. Uh, yeah, they, they brought up one her or name. two. Yeah, yeah where the they... first episode. Well, yeah. they brought up her name, but there was also yeah. a scene. I think later on. Oh, it was where... this episode. It was the, the third episode where she gets to the arcade and she brings up her friend that knew everything about it. Though it's really cool that in the show they could afford to uh, pay a claim for, the or whatever, for Mortal Kombat. So mm -hmm. now we actually get them talking about Mortal Kombat 2 instead of the made up game that they had in the video game. Do you remember what the fake Mortal Kombat was? No, oh, I can look it up, but I'm nah, blanking on good. it. But it's all it's it's something to do with the game itself, and it kind of is a, is a play on words. But I'm blanking on it right now. Yeah, well, I I like that reference a lot. Um, so yeah, do you want to do you want to get into it? Yeah, absolutely. As far as uh, the beat by beat, mm -hmm. so we're starting um, ten miles out of Boston, um, in in uh, um, you know, British Columbia. The, I actually, as far as those complaints, um, you know, about this is not what 10 miles out of Boston looks like. Uh, I would say having gone to Tanglewood, which involves going 10 miles out of Boston, um, that there is quite a lot of wooded, you know, you, you can go 10, if you go in the right direction, you will find a lot of wooded areas and some, you know, some rivers and hills. I don't think it was that far off. So um, mm -hmm. I know there's been a lot of making fun of uh, this episode for that. Which is just what a weird thing for people to focus on, but I also right. don't agree with it. So mm -hmm. just wanted to. Um, and spoiler alert: they, they they filmed this in Canada. They're yeah. not going to have all the right roads. <laughs> sure, <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so it's established. We're ten miles from Boston, and um, Joel and Elia hanging out around the creek, and you know having character building conversations, and you know she's she brings up Tess, and he gets briefly mad, mm -hmm. uh, and he you know, sets a rule that you don't bring up Tess again. And she agrees. And he's got a little, he makes a little nod. Unless, wait, no, that's, um, is that later? No, it's, it's at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when they're in the woods. And they, they do, do a good job of, again, with, with all the adaptations that they're doing on this show and some of the changes that they're doing and expanding different things, mm -hmm. they do such a good job of just throwing lines from the game. Mm -hmm. And they threw that in here too with Ellie talking about, I've never been in the woods before. And, Okay. Oh, yeah, that. Part, yes. Yeah, part of that whole conversation is straight from the game. And it's just, mm -hmm. they do but such a good job of weaving it in and out. The notable character moment is, you know, when Ellie basically tells Joel that he can't mm -hmm. blame her for Tessa's death. Yeah. And Joel just gives her a little nod, like not even a line or anything. He just mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm, yep. And that's it, basically. Uh, and then they go on the road. And that is where, man, this is, <laughs> I know we've talked about this already to some degree, but 
the way that they have made Fedra just irredeemably evil in this show right. is above <laughs> and beyond what I remember it being in the I mean, sure, you mm -hmm. know, they were they were kind of a fascist government in the game, but you didn't find or maybe you did. Did you find a mass grave of, you know, just non-infected people that right, have just been executed for convenience? Not, not that I can remember from the game. I have to go back. And, I yeah. keep meaning to go back and, and play it. I, I'm i trying to to hold out as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah, want to find the, a full-on Pol Pot-style but... mass yeah. grave. Like anybody that we didn't have space for to evacuate, we just mm -hmm. executed just because. And that whole uh, thing was told so beautifully where you see the mom with the, the kid and then the next thing you saw, you just see two skeletons with the two blankets next to each other that you saw them wrapped in before and mm -hmm. just good storytelling. Yeah. And that's kind of the last scene we spent with Joel and Ellie for a while. Well, we get uh, get them in the, the store again where they see the arcade. And by the way, it's The Turning is mm -hmm. the, the game title and the video game. And that's where you get Ellie that goes underneath the, the store and she sees the infected down there. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah, she's got a little moment that, where that... she like cuts open his skull and mm -hmm. reveals a little bit of the fuzzy white, you know, fungus. Yeah. And then gets her first kill. Yep. First Ellie kill of, of the show. And I do kind of like that moment too. Just again, just it's kind of like the car ride from the first episode where mm -hmm. here's gameplay for you. There's not really gameplay of Joel scavenging through the store just like you would a hundred thousand times through the first mm -hmm. two games looking for duct tape and scissors and yeah, yeah i kept all like, the other hey stuff. look in those I, this whole episode is like hey check those draws there's some gauze in there probably right but yeah but then from there they kind of talk about uh bill and then that switches to bill and frank and or i guess bill at first where he is shown in his bunker and mm -hmm. making fun of the old fedra scum or whatever he called him, the whole line he did, which apparently was from listening to the, the HBO's podcast was just a expression on there to give him an idea of what to think about. And he goes, no, I'm saying this. Mm -hmm. Fun. Yeah, man, that's uh, as far as casting goes, apparently he was not the first choice to play Bill. Uh, but man, he, nailed it. he did good. What a perfect. Perfect. I, I could not think of, uh, you know, if you need a, hey, we need a, a, a gay prepper weirdo. It's like right. Nick Hoffman is inspired, inspired choice. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we, we get this really cool. I don't know if, whether to call it a montage because it's not, you know, like quick cuts or right. anything. But mm -hmm. it's just kind of like here is a day in the life, you know, as he goes about um you know, doing his going to the looting various stores. Well, I don't know if you've called looting. I mean, it's not like anybody yeah. owns them anymore. Actually, but, I, know, I think my whole is... my whole mm -hmm. favorite part of that whole looting scene was mm -hmm. what was the first thing he does? He goes steals his neighbor's boat. Oh yeah. So it just makes you feel like him and his neighbor had issues at some point. And he's like, mm -hmm. first thing I'm doing is I'm taking this. Yeah. Now, uh, now I'll do my Home Depot run and I'll go do all this stuff. But yep, get his wine, all that. Mm -hmm. Um, and we get all sorts of cool, cool little moments, you know, like, uh, we see the setup and of course there's going to be payoff for this later on of his mm -hmm. like trap system, his, uh, mm -hmm. kind of, he's got, um, bombs and flamethrowers and trip wires and things mm -hmm. kind of out there to catch I, any infected. Another thing I really like that they changed from the games is I like mm -hmm. that he basically just took over a street. Yeah. He didn't like set up a whole town's worth of stuff. Like you have in the game. It's or a whole section of a town is like, this mm -hmm. is just my block. I'm protecting my block. I don't care about anything else. This is I'm protecting yeah, for my a single home person, in the around area. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I, I don't know how you defend a whole, whole town right. just in terms of perimeter, but yep. Um, so that's cool. Uh, He's uh they you know they establish him really well. He gets he gets some good moments like you know I, I really enjoyed him chuckling at the one uh, uh, zombie blowing up, and then mm -hmm. just going like never gets hey, old. Yeah, I I want to say that that was one of only two infected we saw in the entire episode, the one mm, that yeah, Ellie yeah. kills, and then that one. There was no other infected in this entire episode, which is mm -hmm. great. Yeah, but that that was a nice uh nice little moment. But the next time that he finds somebody in his perimeter. It is not an affected. It is uh, it is a uh, another dude 
who's mm-hmm. fallen into one of his traps, like a um, ground trap hole mm-hmm. type thing that's caved in under him. And, uh, you know, they've got their, their little standoff of whether they can trust each other and are you armed and all that stuff. And, um, you know, he once once they've got once he's got him out of the hole and they're facing each other and they realize that, OK, we're probably not going to kill each other. That's when we start talking about, uh, do you have food? And, right. uh, you know, well, I'm not going to feed you because then I have to feed everybody. Yeah, I'm not Arby's. <laughs> not an Arby's. <laughs> that was also a fun. There's, there's no free lunch here. It's not an Arby's. It's like Arby's did that free lunch. What are you doing? <laughs> right. I, yeah, I, so I, many good. Again, we don't have a, a Frank to compare him to, but he's mm-hmm. so good in this yeah. episode. I like even right before that when he's in the hole and he goes, "Are you armed?" And there's mm-hmm. a pause. He goes, "No." He goes, "Why'd you? Why'd you wait?" And he goes, "I wanted to lie. I couldn't think of anything." Yeah. <laughs> That guy, uh, I don't remember his name, this actor, but he I think he's like the main waiter in White Lotus. I don't know mm-hmm. if you watch White Lotus. That's what I've heard. I haven't watched it, but that's mm. what I remember. Yeah, well, he's good. I don't think Her- I've seen Murray him stuff before. Yeah, Murray Bartlett. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so then, you know, now we kind of get a variety of flashes, you know, a Moments in their lives flashes forward in time as we see mm-hmm. their relationship. And uh, yeah, uh, the first step of that is, you know, he takes a shower at Bill's house and Bill cooks him dinner. And they have a nice romantic evening, which, by the way, um, this show is brought to you by <laughs> Louis Jadot Beaujolais Village, which I recognized right away as the wine being poured at the first dinner scene. Oh, there you go. Actually, one of my personal favorites uh, that I have as a just around the house drinking wine pretty right. regularly. So I was like, oh, yeah, Bill's got good taste. That's like, <laughs> that's a really good table wine, you know? There you go. Yeah, I like their, their moment right at the beginning at the piano where he starts playing the song and Bill's like, yeah, whatever, until he starts playing the one song and he's singing it incorrectly or whatever. And just the difference in the way Frank and Bill interpret i forget what song they were playing mm-hmm. but um but i thought that moment was good like you said then then the dinner scene and and then that turns into you know yeah, a romantic sc- night isn't the dinner scene for is the dinner scene then it's the piano scene then it's the romantic night yeah i think i think yeah. you're right yeah I think but you're right. not that it really matters uh yeah. but the uh, yeah the piano scene is kind of interesting because it's like uh you know, he sees he's got a piano he pulls out his song book he starts singing something you know not not particularly well uh mm-hmm. and uh bill starts like oh no not this song he starts tearing up mm-hmm. and um the implication being that there's some kind of relationship or painful memory or something behind that song and then right. bill sings it and you can kind of see all that coming mm-hmm. forth and then they have that conversation about you know was it a girl it's like no it wasn't a girl and mm-hmm. then they kiss so it, it yeah. does, you know, you, I know you say that like, oh, he never had anybody before, but that scene to me implies that there was somebody at some point. Well, there may have been somebody that he was involved in, but he also admits to never having any. He didn't care about humanity in general. It, well, no, that. he never had any physical relations with anybody because they mm. do have that little conversation. In the oh, so again, so maybe oh, he's had feelings for unrequited. People. Yeah. 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 OK, that makes sense. So maybe you just never had deep, and that's where either. I got those flipped because I remember it was it was Bill that ends up taking a shower because Frank's like, "Dude, you stink!" Right. And then, Frank's then, already taking a shower. Frank takes yeah, a shower. Then we have that the, scene. So yeah, you're right. Movie. So it's dinner, then piano, and then that stuff. But yep. But yeah, but, it's just while a lot of it is that's the best part. A lot of it's in your face of okay, they're gonna make this relationship work, and and we're going through the motions of of the the budding of their relationship, but as you said, there's just so many subtle things that you go through that then you can try to sit there and go, oh, I wonder what Bill's actual past was like. Yeah, this show is very, very good with the little details mm-hmm. and telling you just enough to make you think, you know, about, oh, there's more behind this. I mm-hmm. really, really like the way the storytelling's handled here. Um, and yeah, while, you know, you can say like, oh, it's, you know, Typical, uh, you know, gay romance between these two guys, you know, kind of burly guys that you wouldn't normally expect to have a gay romance, whatever. You mm-hmm. know, we've we've seen movies that do this. Uh, obviously, there is, 
you know, plenty of content like that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just thought it was exceptionally well handled in this particular case. And, uh, you know, in the context of a genre show, mm-hmm. really impressive. Yeah. And then you kind of see, uh, I do like Frank's line. I was like, I'm not a whore. It's like, I'm not leaving after right. this. <laughs> I'm not going to do this for yeah, you. And then you're going to kick me out. Fed me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, I, it's like, I'm not doing this for food. I, I, I'm doing this because I, I feel a connection kind of a, a, a moment. And then mm-hmm. you kind of see them yeah. all of a see sudden a become love a couple. Scene. And, and we see, uh, I forget how many years they jumped. I think it's like a, almost a decade, isn't it? Or is it three? Yeah, they had a couple They had a couple jumps in there. And They're definitely see, a bunch of time jumps. Mm-hmm. You can see the changes that Frank has done to Bill and loosen them up a little bit. But then Frank wants... You know, human interactions. But I was like, absolutely not. He's like, well, I, I kind of already have. <laughs> well, yeah, the, and we find out that that's with you know Tess that he's been talking right. to Tess on the radio. It's mm-hmm. nice another opportunity to see Tess, even though she's left us, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, one thing where I actually kind of agree with Bill, and I think that Frank was being uh, very unreasonable or 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 irrational, or impractical, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. is um, that Frank got very obsessed with like beautifying the town. Like, I'm going right. to paint all the buildings and I'm going to clean up the stores and, you know, do all these things to make things more livable around here. Because on our, you know, a home is not just our house. A home is everything around our house. Mm-hmm. And while I can somewhat understand that perspective, uh, one thing that does not get spoken, um, even though I probably should, is that, uh, you know, beautifying the town like anything that makes the town look like a town, like a well-kept town Mm -hmm. is going to attract attention. Like the more that the town looks like a ruin, the better. Uh, So that whole Frank's whole idea with we've got to make this look, we've got to make things look nice. It's like, no, that's just, that's just hanging a big, please attack me. (laughs) Right. Sign on it. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, if I was Bill, that would have been my response to that. But you know, Bill is, Going along with it to some degree because he wants to make mm-hmm. Frank happy. Yeah. And even then, they get an argument at one point over one of the buildings, I want to say. And that kind of hinted at whatever breakup they had mm-hmm. in the actual video game, which is why they split up at one point, And then Frank ends up hanging himself because I believe he got infected as well in the game, which was mm-hmm. a part of the reason. And, and you're like, oh, well, here comes this, which was a good kind of a, a trick on, on gamers, people that never played the game or just like an, Oh, they, they had a fight and now they, they've worked it out and, and they mm-hmm. can go forward. But no, that's actually something I didn't even think about was the whole beautifying the town would uh, cause yeah, a big rate of rest. But yeah, yeah but it's, it's smart, my first it's, thought. It's smart on you. I'm going, well, hey, he's got nothing better to do. <laughs> and that's also, that's true. It's a hobby. Mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, after years of that, then, then they're like, well, well, we're just going to do this. And maybe even at that point, because they don't, they only show the one Raiders scene. So maybe they just mm-hmm. had not seen Raiders. And so yeah, he must I, I know, have... I, I know they get warned about it at one point, but well, yeah, Joel warns him kind of at the end of all their scenes together. But first we get the second dinner of the show, which is, mm-hmm. or, or I should, I guess in this case, it's, is it, it's a, it's a lunch actually, right? Cause they're yeah. out, out mm-hmm. in the sun uh, on the patio, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's you know a double date with Tess and Joel and, right. and Frank and uh, and Bill like normal times, and just a really nice scene where we you know this is where I think um, you know even though it's not driving the primary narrative forward this is where I think this really has some merit in regards to you know the relationship with our main characters and letting us experience what Joel is like, you know, interacting mm-hmm. with other people uh, that he, you know, maybe, you know, they, they're, they we see the process of him and Bill building trust, mm-hmm. which I really enjoyed. You know, we see the relationship between, between Tess and Frank kind of growing. And uh, you really, you know, feel like you get some, you get a good sense of what, uh, what Joel is like, you know, outside of, uh, what we've seen so far, you know, when he's dealing just with, with other people on the road. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely tell he knows how to deal with somebody like Bill where he, he brings up, it's like, Hey, we can help each other and get that gun out of my, my face kind of a mm-hmm. conversation and, and all the stuff that they have at their, at their camp. That yeah. They are able to help with Bill. If Bill can help him with this, 
Mm-hmm. And, and yes, it, while we don't see the, the the more evil side that we all know that Joel had to have gone through over those 20 years, it is nice to kind of see him do what he does best as far as mm-hmm. dealing with these kind of people. Yeah, and part of the way that he gains Bill's trust is because he under, he like you know can understand mm-hmm. what Bill needs, right? He mm-hmm. he identifies correctly, oh, this you know your fence you're going to need to replace this fencing at some point. I can mm-hmm. get you the you know aluminum braids or whatever. Mm-hmm. All I also, kind of, I, it, yeah. You had brought up Frank and Tess and I really liked that little moment. I don't know it was one of those where you could almost miss it because they were talking quietly mm-hmm. as Bill and Joel were walking back up with them. But it is Frank that sets up the radio. Oh, yeah. And I want to say, I've, I've heard it from other people as far as ideas. And I need to go back and watch the, 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 the when I get the whole series done, I want to go back and rewatch it. I want to go back and try to t- set up the timing or whatever, because a lot of people believe that the stuff in the basement was set up to start playing the radio if they don't, you know, go down and reset something, which is basically mm-hmm. saying, cause you know, they, they were saying eighties is danger or, mm-hmm. or, and that's something that Frank brings up. And I, I want to say that the moment that the radio starts playing near the end of the first episode, which kind of mm-hmm. gives you that idea of how the radio works is, slightly after what we get at the end of this episode with Bill and Frank passing away and then not resetting whatever timer they have. So now that music mm-hmm. is playing to try to tell right. Tess and Joel that, Hey, there's danger up here in, mm-hmm. in our camp. Cause we're not, we're not home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, which, you know, the way Bill said that even, you know, Ellie comments on that, you know, this guy's a genius. Mm-hmm. And she's absolutely correct. Like his setup is really well. Everything about, you know, the way that Bill is surviving out there is really well thought out. Uh, the only thing really is just that, you know, he didn't have to deal with Raiders until that one mm-hmm. point um, after Joel warns him. And um, I mean, the only thing I can think as far as like rationalizing this is just that, you know, he was far out enough that people hadn't really right. reached him. It looked like or- a little small town. Mm-hmm. Or, or that that he was kind of slightly off the map, mm-hmm. but Joel knows that that there's people roaming that way. You know, Joel yeah, has I'm... probably seen them on the road, on the way, or he knows that they're how many. He doesn't say like how many miles they are away. He just right. says that they're coming. And, um, and you got to think after so many years that they're going to hit all the big towns, and it's like, all right, we got those down. Let's go. Maybe we haven't checked out this small town in in Massachusetts right. just yet. I mean, Joel's that... probably seen the camp or something. So right that that whole fight scene with the Raiders was probably my least favorite part of the episode. Cause it just feels like who knows what Bill and Frank are going through, but you would have thought after the 15, 20 years they had been together, Bill might've taught Frank more (laughs) than what he was going through. And Bill was already out there doing all the attacking. And for somebody who's a survivalist and, and is so set in his ways, Bill is just standing in the middle of the street. That's an interesting point. I mean, it may also just be that like that's just not who Frank is, and mm-hmm. and Bill was not going to try and turn him into that. Yeah, you know. But when Bill somebody... gets shot, he's just out in the middle of the street. You would have thought he would have had other layers of protection set up. Maybe Frank took them down <laughs> at some point. But then, yeah. then they have that kind of bait and switch where it's now you know Bill gets shot. Frank's trying to take care of him, and they they go to the black, and you're like, oh man, did Bill die? Oh no, he's in a wheelchair. Oh no, Frank's in a wheelchair. What, yeah, that was the thing that happened. Like, it takes like a minute where like, okay, that's actually the 10 year jump, right? Yeah, that's the big one. Yeah. Okay. So it was like it was three years and then 10 years. Um, and yeah, that also gave me pause where it's like, okay, well, Bill recovered. What's going on with Frank now? And uh, mm-hmm. what is going on with Frank apparently is cancer. Yeah. You know, ironically, the <laughs> most common cause of death pre-pandemic or pre-zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, there is still no cure, obviously. Right. Not even any way to mitigate it. So, you know, Frank's dying. And uh, they they have their kind of series of tearful goodbyes. Mm-hmm. You know, they have like they have a last meal. Frank talks about how he's close to the end and all that. Last meal is very romantic. Yeah. They're, they're setting up the he's going to take all these drugs and and go peacefully. So it's not. Um, 
unexpected mm-hmm. and they can go out their way. So we, like you said, they can have that one final day. Actually, one thing before that, that we skipped, it was a beautiful scene. One of the trades that they make with, with Joel and Tess is for mm, the strawberries. Right. And, and, and what, that's a, just an amazing scene between those two. Mm-hmm. Cause you got to think how many years it's been since they've tasted anything like that. And they're just eating all these rations or carrots and potatoes or whatever that, <laughs> bill has been planting and then here you are getting strawberries and then just it's it's to them this whole re they've been trying to rebuild this their little world and then to be able to have something like that that you haven't had in a decade mm-hmm. just that that scene i know we just skipped over it was really really, really oh yeah cool. no it's just well one of the they've got a they've got a bunch of mm-hmm. this really somebody uh compared compared this to the opening of uh, of up yeah, you know, we're, we're <laughs> first ten minutes of up that just kind of show the entire marriage, mm-hmm. and this is really you know it is the relationship in microcosm. This episode, yeah. you know, it's you know the whole from from the start until the end, uh, the important moments. Really, yeah, but the, the the only difference is that the 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 old man and up did not take the drugs with the wife. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the thing that so there was nothing wrong with Bill, was there? No, he just didn't want to live without didn't Frank, live which without I think Frank. is absolutely beautiful. Would I again? Would I have loved to see Bill interact with Ellie like they do in the game, and they have their big um, arguments and th- the snilly snark offs that those two would have during the scenes that you get in the video game? Absolutely. But this this was the way that this should have gone. If they weren't going to follow the way that the game set it up, where Frank. And and Bill get on in a fight, and while Frank's off, he gets bit, and then doesn't want to come back and infect Bill, so he hangs himself or whatever. If they weren't going to go that route, this is a much more beautiful way for their story to end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. Still, it does feel like a little bit of a of a waste to to you yeah. know end Bill with a essentially a suicide, but mm-hmm. understandable, I guess, um, in the the circumstances. And what I really like about it is, so then, you know, Ellie and Joel show up and Joel already knows something's wrong because all the plants are dead. And, and obviously it's, it's been a little bit since all of that had gone down. And then the the great part about it is, you know, you don't see Bill and Frank, Mm -hmm. right? We know they're, they know they went to the bedroom to lay down together and, and, and go out peacefully. And, but we never go into the room. I mean, like, Ellie and Joel stay away from that room. And then even when they show it at the very end of the episode, when Ellie and Joel are leaving, they know over, they don't pan far enough out to see them in the bed, which I think a lot of shows probably would have done to go, Oh, look how old or how. Well, we I, don't really yeah. we don't want a gross out moment, right? We want to remember these characters mm-hmm. as they were when they were alive. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we don't want that to be the last I mean, mm-hmm. that would just wouldn't make sense to do. So yeah, and, and I I was choice, I was I expecting them just to be all cuddled up together or whatever. I I still feel like it wasn't too far apart. A couple. Oh, weeks. as far as how as far as the decay. Yeah, I think okay. they were only a couple of weeks from passing before Joel and Ellie get there. Because again, I'm pretty sure that the music starts playing. Mm-hmm. Maybe the night out the day after that they pass because they don't reset the stuff but. sure sure but i mean this could have been playing for a long time well no it's it starts playing because there was no music and then when joel is oh, sleeping the music oh, plays oh, oh, oh yeah okay and then yeah, that's yeah. where she starts coming up with uh the uh lingo and 80s means danger mm-hmm. kind of thing so it turns on at that point that's where i think around the time they would have passed depending on how long that timer is set or whatever but gotcha, it is yeah. it's pretty interesting to then see ellie find the note and read through that note and get to the point of tests and kind of have a pause so then we get the the conversation with joel and and ellie which is very much from the game but just in a different part of okay here's our ground rules we just don't talk about our pasts you know, like the pasts are not for us to to learn about each other um, don't tell tell anybody about your bike because they're gonna think you're crazy and just kill you. Mm-hmm. And anything I say goes. Like that whole scene is taken straight from the game. Yeah. At one point, actually, I think it was before they even get to Bill's area. It's kind of game. a bookend with but the opening really scene done. because it's yeah. like that 
conversation continued, right? Mm -hmm. Like all the same points that we had at the very beginning of the episode were picking back up, except, mm -hmm. you know, now after invoking Tessa's name again in the letter. Right. But I thought it was very beautifully done. Uh, bookends, as you said, of Joel and Ellie's story with the Bill and Frank stuff in the middle. Now they get to go off. They're off to Pittsburgh um, for more of that stuff. And now you get those those extra scenes we were talking about that they can fit in anywhere because the first time you meet a bloater is mm -hmm. at the school in the town that Bill is at when you're trying to find the battery. That is right. going to be used elsewhere. Same with the, the hanging upside down scene they can use elsewhere. So there's a lot of different key moments they can use that will be placed mm -hmm. in other yeah. episodes. But I thought I don't think this was, is great. Yeah, I don't think that's anything to worry about. That's no. kind of like if you were watching a movie adaptation and every 10 minutes you were pausing the movie and complaining about like how accurate the last 10 minutes are. It's like, no, just, mm -hmm. you know, it's a TV show. Yeah, and it's, and it's, it's, its own still adaptation on it. It's a so story, good. it's still a a big, you know, how many, how many episodes? Nine episodes, 10 episodes? Nine episodes, yep. Okay, so we're going to get however many hours, you know, these episodes are like 80 minutes long. It's like watching a movie yeah. every well, week. From what I have seen, the next couple are like in the 40 minute range. Okay, so let's the say first, nine the hours. First episode right? and the, yeah, the first episode and the third episode were our, the long ones of the season. So if you're just looking at it as a nine hours of adaptation, mm -hmm. Where you know you can move things within those nine hours, yeah. you can move, you can add things or move things around. Mm -hmm. uh, there is absolutely no use worrying about. Oh, this particular moment, which happens at this point in the game, is not here. Yeah. That must mean that it's been cut. No, no, it'll you know, be there. Just, th and, that's and the, the kind of complaints. You know, save those for when the show is over, and, and then you well, can worry about whether you get to see the the first time you saw it blown. Yeah, up. and even then. If it's not in there or it's it's something completely different, it's okay because you know what? If you want the story exactly like the Last of Us video game, there's now three different adaptations of oh, that video so game. So uh, you, you play whichever one you want: the original, the remaster, or the I, technically remake put in the Part Two mm. universe uh, engine thing. You can play any of those and have your story exactly like you want it, but. This is still by far the greatest video game adaptation we've ever seen. It's not even close. And <laughs> to have an episode like this, which again, was just told in notes. Mm -hmm. And it was 40, 45 minutes of beautiful television. Just shows you how much they understand this world, which helps because Neil Druckmann is part of it. Um, but just they're nailing this whole series. And I, it's every single Sunday, I'm super excited to watch the episode and then wait a few days and then relive it all with you is it, it all kind of comes back to me is as, as then you get to watch it and, and we get a chat about it. It's been great. Oh, yeah. It's by far the best thing I'm watching right now. And, but you know, mm -hmm. far and away. All right. You want to give a, a rating there, sir? Mm, well, I think I'm back up to a 10. There you go. For this one. Like, uh, you know, I went down a little bit. You're right. The only weakness, the, the the slightest weakness is, you know, thinking about that prepper attack. A, why have there never been prepper attacks before? Which, again, that's something that you can hit cannon away if you want. Yeah, but, yeah there could have been. But B, you know, why didn't he give uh, Frank some training to be better prepared for when the prepper mm -hmm. attack happens? Also, uh, and I actually, that, mm -hmm. one more thing I just thought about. And I think it was brought up in a different podcast I was watching. Mm -hmm. But it was just so weird that it's like, oh, no, the Raiders are here. He's out there shooting at them and trying to to, to take them out. And then he gets shot and they just pull him into the, the house. And they're like, don't worry. The, the, the yeah, that's I was actually I was getting to that because that, yeah. that's such a weird, weird thing. Because right? there's still dudes outside shooting that you, yeah. you're seeing, you know, that are that have not been gotten by the flamethrowers. I don't mm -hmm. see everybody. I don't think yeah. everybody was killed by the flamethrowers, but once uh, Bill gets shot, it's just like, well, yeah, that sequence is over. So yeah. let's just go they back survived. inside the house. They and survived the somehow. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I, I thought that was a little that was a little weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just... I don't know. It. I don't know if he upgraded his traps or if it's just that the traps that are usually infected, you know, were good enough to take care of most of those. Mm-hmm preppers or i mean or, or raiders i should say right uh don't know but that's the one part that felt a little bit clumsy but i don't think clumsy enough 
to really warrant taking anything or maybe even if i were to take a half a point off it the the episode as a whole is so great it's that so it, like, it like it compensates for it right absolutely so you and i are doing the exact thing i'm just a half a point underneath you every time I, okay I so you're, a, you're back at yeah. a 9.5 i'm back up to a 9.5 it was really close to a 10 again that that raider fight kept it slightly away from a perfect 10 and that's kind of about it because really i thought the rest of the episode was absolutely fantastic i'm still hoping that there's this one episode out there that just absolutely blows me away to be able to give a 10 and i'm trying to keep mm-hmm. that I mean, maybe the finale i mean there i fully like expect the finale could be fantastic <laughs> The ending of the ending of the first game is the thing that has always stuck with me the most, as I think for most people. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, if, again, not to spoil it for anybody out there, but oh no, I it's going to bring up so many conversations for those that have not played the game. Oh, and the fact that they've huge. they've renewed it now for the second season, which you and I were not surprised by at all, mm-hmm. but just hearing that news has been great. It's just blowing up. HBO. Have you it's, read the Neil Druckmann interview where he where he answers some questions about season two? I have not. Okay. But I did hear the other, I always forget, is it Mason? That is the other director, the one from Chernobyl. Oh, I can't think of his name either. Um, I, I did see an interview with him saying that absolutely game, uh, the second game of the series, it has to be two seasons. Oh, no, that's the one I was thinking right. about. So, sorry, you're okay. right. That was, that was not Druckmann. That was the other guy. Yeah. So it Okay, was, yeah, yeah. It, exactly. So, they talk about... So we're not going to do that. So, this this answers some of our questions that we've been asking mm-hmm. the last two episodes, right? Where uh, we're not going to fill time between games. We're not going to cover the mm-hmm. time between Last of Us Part 1 and 2 in a season or two. And we're basically going to greatly expand on the storylines of the second game. Mm-hmm. Which, and now it'll just be, do they change the order of things? Or do they just go exactly how the games went? Because, mm. again, not to spoil it for people that haven't played, it would be really interesting if they don't change the order of things. It would be. they. I don't, I don't know how much, you know, the way that the game kind of messes with your emotions, I don't mm-hmm. know how well that will translate to a non-interactive medium. Uh, yeah. But just knowing that, you know, the second last was, again, staying completely spoiler-free, Yes, but the second Last of Us has a lot more characters, a lot more story arcs, and a lot mm-hmm. more locations than the first one. Yeah, so that is one of those things where you know we could we could spend a lot more time, especially with two of those three groups that we didn't spend as much time with in oh, yeah. the game. Th- there's so, a lot we could they could do. It could, honestly, it could be three seasons. Oh yeah, how sure. Much uh, stuff but is in there. the question, and I'm a little bit worried, but I guess I. You know, from indications so far, it doesn't seem like there's a show that's going to jump the shark in any way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's been so solid. And I know we're only three episodes in, mm-hmm. but it's just so promising right now that, you know, you'd think, okay, with these same creative minds, what could possibly go wrong? But as you know, I'm not so crazy about the narrative of The Last of Us Part Two. Mm-hmm. So now the question is, is the extreme fleshing out of The Last of Us Part Two going to hurt it? Or is it going to fix the things that didn't right. work for me? Yeah, you know I mean, they I mean? Could definitely could connect some dots that you might have felt were missing to make the leaps that they do in the game fit better. And or... it's less about connecting plot points and more about the characterization and the emotions. Right. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, if, we, if we're going to spend a lot more time with everybody uh, in the future seasons... Uh, mm-hmm. that might make um, certain things just work a lot better. Yeah, it'll be really interesting, for sure. So, yeah. I will get there in a couple years when... when That's true. No, I, I just want to talk about it just because there was, uh, yeah, there was yeah, an yeah. interview. Yeah, 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 that's great. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be a lot of fun. But next episode, I know they're in Pittsburgh. Uh, we'll see how far into Pittsburgh they get. There's some interesting things in the game that happen, um, but do they break that into to, to the fifth episode? Do they move things around? It'll be... That's what I love about it, is... Mm, While I know like, where the like main the a being, where I know where the main story is going, who knows what they're going to touch or when they're going to bring it up or what they're going to mm-hmm. change. I've also seen a screenshot from the quote unquote um, teaser trailer that they had, which is not in the teaser trailer, which is driving me absolutely nuts. I won't okay. spoil it with you, but there's. The, I didn't watch it. The, yeah. 
the uh, thumbnail they picked is very interesting. And again, I'm like, all right, I have to watch this trailer and see exactly what this is. And it's not in the trailer at all. <laughs> but it's just a thumbnail they added. But we will do that next week when we get to episode four. It's been fun. It's been a lot of indeed, fun. Indeed, indeed. And yes. I cannot wait until we get to March when The Last of Us season one is done and we go back to garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I love garbage. You know me. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we will get back to just ripping apart media eventually. <laughs> it's just Last of Us hasn't allowed us to do it. But Too we'll damn do good. In due time. But for now, that's Jens. I'm Randy. Thanks so much for hanging out with us again. We'll see you next week. But until then. Cheers.